I appreciate you stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what is inside this box, which is an Ayama 808 Pro integrated amplifier with Bluetooth. I've done about 70 videos, and all but two of those videos have been about vintage gear. One of the videos was about the IR remote control volume device that would be useful for a vintage receiver, integrated amplifier, or preamplifier owner to use to have remote control volume capability quite easily. The other review I did was on a pair of $20 to $30 cheap integrated amplifiers I had gotten off Amazon and I had measured them and kind of just talked about the results. I do speaker measurements which involve measuring impedance or the frequency response and in order to do that I needed a small decent amplifier and I did a little research and thought the Ayama A07 integrated amplifier would work fine. When I actually measured that I found out that it had about three tenths of a dB channel imbalance between the two channels and I emailed Ayama to ask them if they had a better uh, volume potentiometer that was available for this unit. Well, they didn't have one, but we had a little rapport going and I told them I had a YouTube channel and I tested things and he asked if I would be interested in testing their A08 Pro when it became available. I said that I would and gave him a list of things that I test, which are the standard kind of measurements that I do. And he said he would send me one when it became available. Well, that was about six months ago, and a few days ago I got an email from him telling me that an Ayama A08 was on its way to me. A few days after that, it arrived at my doorstep, and here I am. Testing modern gear is not something that I'm generally going to do, but since they're letting me keep this regardless of how I review it, I thought it would be just a fun thing to do. Anyway, I thought I would just kind of give it a general test like I, I do most of my amplifiers and listen to it and that kind of thing. If you do have any particular gear that they have that you think would be worthy of me testing, let me know and I will ask them for that. But I don't think me testing new gear is going to be a trend. I have plenty of old vintage gear which I like to test. So be that as may, I just kind of wanted to do the upfront and honest about what's going on. So uh, right now we'll open up the box, see what's in there, and then we'll do a little tour of the device and I will get into the measurements. I thought what they put on the outside of the box was interesting. Professional digital audio, create outstanding sound, transmit, nature, music. Okay. I don't know if those are real music notes, but We'll go ahead and open this up. You know, so they do use some foam padding and then it looks like we have a QC card and a Yama sticker. I'm not sure, I guess if you had a computer, you could put that on it. And here is the uh, little owner's manual, I guess. You have a uh, AC power cord. Here's our power brick. It looks like we have the 36 volt 6 amp adapter. And here is the. Oh, there's our uh, Bluetooth antenna. And here is the Ayama A08. And I will do a little bit closer view of that in just a moment. Here is a close-up view of the front of the A08 Pro, and starting on the left, we have our VU meter. I'm not sure what information that gives, but during testing, I will let you know. It is rather small. In fact, it is about the size of a half dollar. Here are our tone controls. There's bass and treble controls, and the nice thing is they are detented and it's a very fine detent, so that is kind of nice. There isn't a center detent, but there are several uh, detents along the way. I kind of like that. Also, here is our on-off volume control knob. It does have a nice feel to it. The whole unit is metal, and it has a solid feel to it to give you an idea as to the size of the A08 Pro. Here is a cassette, uh, a good old dark side of the moon, 
and that kind of gives you an idea as to the size of the A08 Pro. Now we're going to look at the back. Here is the rear of the A08 Pro and starting on the left we have our Bluetooth RF connector here which appears to be gold plated as are the RCA input jacks here which are nice that they're uh, color coded in red and white and then we have our auxiliary output here which would be an eighth inch stereo uh, jack here are our three-way binding posts for the speaker outputs and we have our DC input from the power supply here I should point out that the unit weighs about 25 ounces Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the A08 Pro putting out 5 watts into 4 ohms. The gain has been adjusted to almost 29 dB and you can see our SNRs are around 83 and the THD is point, we'll say not more than 0.007%. Looking pretty good and our THD plus noise is around minus 81 dB. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the A08 Pro putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. And you can see that our SNRs are both about 83 dB and the THD is less than 0.007% we'll say. And the THD plus noise is at about minus 80 dB. So it's looking pretty good here. Here we have the frequency response of the A08 Pro with it putting out 5 watts into 4 ohms and it's basically plus or minus maybe 6 tenths of a dB. The channels are balanced within about 2 tenths of a dB. I did adjust the bass and treble controls to make the response as flat as I could and you will see where the controls were set. We are also set for about 29 dB of gain out of the A08 Pro. Here we have the frequency response of the A08 Pro with it putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. I did tweak the bass and treble controls a bit from where they are for the 4 ohm load case in order to get the frequency response flat and it is looking really good. It's plus or minus oh, 3 tenths of a dB, 2 tenths of a dB and the channel balance is maybe 4 tenths of a dB worst case. Right now we're looking at the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the A08 Pro putting out about 42, 43 watts into 8 ohms. And what I'm going to do is start increasing the input signal so we get a larger output and we'll just kind of see where it goes to pot. At 50 watts our SNR is what 62 dB for the left and about maybe 57 for the right. Our THD is still looking really good. Let's go up a little bit more. Though you can see the right channel is definitely noisier and we are looking at SNRs of 52, 53 dB for the left channel, 48 for the right. Our THD is still looking good but the uh, THD plus noise and the SNRs are, are in the upper 40s, lower 50s. So I would call it quits for this guy which is at about uh, 60 watts let's say into 8 ohms if we go down uh, a little bit more. Right now at about 53 watts and say 55 watts our THD is still looking really good. The SNR has gotten a little bit better and the THD plus noise has gotten better but I would say that this guy is probably about a 50 watt into 8 ohm uh, amplifier. Right now I've got the A08 Pro putting out between 86 to 89 watts into 4 ohms. Our THDs are less than 0.05%, let's say, and the SNRs are right around 60 dB. We can go up a little bit more on the output power. So here we're at 90, about 100 watts into 4 ohms. The SNRs have dropped down to the uh, lower 50s. Uh, let's go up one more notch. So here we're putting up... 108 watts and 111 watts in a forums. You can see this noise floor here increased. And our SNRs are, what, 48 dB and the THD plus noise is around minus 46 dB. So this thing could put out 110 watts into 4 ohms. And just for grins, we are drawing 
about three and a half amps of AC current. If we back this down just a little bit to a more usable level, somewhere around 100 watts, you could use this thing. So if I decrease it till we're putting out about 80, we'll say 87 watts into 4 ohms, the SNRs are almost 60 and the THD is pretty, pretty good here. So you could say that this amplifier can put out 110 watts into 4 ohms, but it's not going to be real pretty. I would say if we go down just a little bit more. So here at 77 watts, 79 watts into 4 ohms, our THDs are less than 0.05% and our SNRs are at least uh, 64 dB and our THD plus noise is about minus 63 dB, let's say. So it looks pretty good there all in all at about that power level, which is probably the the one I would tend to rate it at. It It isn't as good as what the IEMA data sheet said. It said there should be greater than a 100 dB SNR, but that's not going to happen at this power level. But overall, it, to my opinion, for uh, what it is, it's not a, uh, a bad bit of performance into 4 ohms. Here is a plot of the A08 Pro's output impedance. In this range here, up to, say, maybe... I don't know, four kilohertz, the damping factor calculated from the output impedance would be about 41, which actually is very good from the things I've measured. However, as we start getting up in frequency over here at 20 kilohertz, the damping factor is only about six, which is not that great. This plot shows the THD versus frequency for a couple different power levels, and that is into four ohm loads. The worst case THD is maybe 0.15% and that would be at the highest power level which would be 40 watts and then once we get less power than that we are less than 0.1% THD across the frequency band. Uh, this little reduction here in THD is actually not a measurement glitch. I verified this by hand and indeed the THD starts going down uh, as you get up up in frequency at about, I don't know, it's about 15 kilohertz or something like that. Once you get up there, the THD actually drops. So this plot shows the crosstalk of the A08 Pro. In this case, we have a signal going into the left channel and the right channel's input is terminated into a short. And with a minus 12.8 dBV signal going in, we are seeing a crosstalk of about minus 87 at the low end of the band that would be minus 87 db at the low end of the band to minus maybe 67 at the high end of the band and so that's actually pretty good here is a plot showing you the thd versus frequency at a couple different output power levels and that's into eight ohms and we see that the a08 pro has a maximum of about 0.2 percent thd at 30 watts and for most of the frequency band, it is less than about 0.02% THD. This graph shows the results of the multitone test on the A08 Pro, putting out about 5 watts into 4 ohms. And it's not bad at all. It's showing between 13 to 15 bits of distortion-free range. Here is the multi-tone response for the A08 Pro with it putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms. It really doesn't look much different than the 4 ohm load case and it is showing a distortion free range of between 13 to 15 bits. This plot is showing the harmonics of the A08 Pro and this is with it putting out 5 watts into 4 ohms. And what's interesting is that the even harmonic, the second harmonic, is higher than the third harmonic, which is the odd harmonic. That's typically what you see with tube amplifiers. Here are the harmonics for the A08 Pro, with it putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. And once again, you can see that the second harmonic, the even harmonic, is just a little bit higher than the odd harmonic over here. Here we have the system noise of the a08 Pro and in this case both of the inputs are terminated into shorts and we're just looking at the noise of the system and it's really pretty good. It's better than minus 100 dBV down probably more like uh, 
maybe 105 dBV, just kind of depends. But overall, it has a pretty low noise floor. And this is with it set for about 29 dB of gain. Right now, we're looking at the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz of the A08 Pro's auxiliary output. The bass and treble controls have been adjusted to give the flattest frequency response, and this looks really pretty darn good. We have a minus 3 dBV signal going in, and the volume control is adjusted to give a gain of about 0 dB. The THD and the SNRs are looking really good, as is the THD plus noise. I'm going to go ahead and increase the level here and see if we get some distortion coming along. Oh, before I do that, let me bring up the harmonics. So before I do that, I just wanted to show you the harmonics. And it's kind of interesting because here's our even harmonic, and it's higher than the odd harmonic, kind of like what you see with tube gear. I'm going to slowly increase the signal going in. It still looks pretty good. Still looks pretty good. Typically, I would run this at 6 dBV, which would be 2 volts in and out. So I'm just going to bring it up to 6 dBV. So this is where I do my normal testing with 2 volts or 6 dBV going in. And you can see our gain is pretty close to zero. Our SNRs have gotten near, they're almost uh, 100 dB. And the THD is 0.0. 3% max. THD plus noise looks pretty good. So overall, it's looking really pretty good at the higher signal level. Here we have the frequency response of the A08 Pro from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and it's being measured at the auxiliary output. I did have to tweak the bass and treble controls just a little bit, but it's pretty much at the same point that it was for the 4 ohm load. And the Frequency response is actually pretty good, plus or minus three tenths of a dB, I would say. And the channels are balanced to within, oh, probably two, three tenths of a dB as well. Right now, we're looking at the THD SNR plot at one kilohertz with the A08 putting out about one watt into four ohm loads. And everything looks pretty good. And one thing that is different is that I have the input signal set to minus 2.2 dBV, or it's pretty close to about 775 millivolts, which is what the A08 specifies as the input sensitivity. So I've got the volume control set to give me this reading. I'm going to just start increasing the volume control and look at what happens with this signal level being fixed, whereas all the other measurements, I set the gain for about 29 dB, and then I adjust the signal level to get the output power. So let's go ahead and adjust the volume. I will say that the volume control is uh, a bit touchy, I would say. It's real sensitive at the lower portion. So uh, we'll just crank it up. And right now we're starting to look a little bit ugly. We're, our SNRs are, are not stellar, that's for sure. And at least our left channel, the, the THD is about a tenth of a percent. So I'll go up just a little bit more. And here we're pretty close to 100 watts and 28 dB of gain. And right there you can see the noise level uh, crept up quite a bit. And our SNRs are now in the lower 50 dB range. Our, our THD is still looking okay. But we're at about 100 watts. And I would say that this would probably be the most I would want to use it into 4 ohm loads. Just for grins, I will keep turning it up. And right there, it's starting to get really, really ugly. And our volume control is right a bit over 29 dB of gain. Here we have the multi-tone response of the A08 Pro. And this is looking at the auxiliary output port. And it's looking pretty good. It has, I would say, you know, at the low end of the band, it's maybe... Uh, 10 bits of distortion free range to about 16 bits over at the uh, high end of the band. So that is not too bad for its preamp stage. One thing I noticed with this higher signal input level is that we have a difference in the output powers into uh, 4 ohms 
and we're about four and a half watts for the left channel and about five and a half watts for the right channel and our gains are different by uh, about a db so i'm curious if i go ahead and lower this and then adjust the um, gain so that we're back at our 28 29 db if those powers stabilize a little bit more so i lowered the input signal level to minus 15.6 dbv and look at how the powers now kind of are pretty close and our gains are pretty close so now with this input these two outputs are pretty close to the same level for all practical purposes so apparently if you were to drive the input of the a08 with a larger signal you would expect that these two uh, output powers would vary and that could be a problem I'm not sure you would hear that but that is just something to consider once again we're looking at the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz of the A08 Pro's auxiliary output and I changed the input level to minus 2.2 dBV which would be about 770 millivolts or so and I'm going to increase the gain or the volume control of the A08 Pro and we'll see how much voltage we can get out before it starts looking crappy or it just hits the end of its capability. So we're at about 5.5 dB and we are max. So we can get out maybe 1.45 volts at about 5.5 dB of gain. Our SNR is still not bad, 88 dB. THD is looking pretty good, but that is the limit to what the A08 Pro can do as far as an output voltage. Right now we have the volume control set to max, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the input signal and just see how much we can get through it before we start getting more distortion. So right now at about 6.8 dBV in, we are starting to get increased distortion. It's still not bad and the SNR is still pretty good, but we're probably not too far away from it hitting its uh, maximum input signal. We are at the maximum volume setting. Looks like we're still good to put in a little bit more signal. And right there at about 10.8 dBV in, our A08 has decided it didn't like that big of a signal. So I will back down the volume and then we're almost back to, to normal. What we are looking at here is the crosstalk between the left and right channels of the A08 Pro's auxiliary output, or the preamp output. It's better than 80 dB for most of the band. We have a little poke through here of the uh, power supply uh, hum at 120 hertz. It's maybe minus 70 db but other than that the crosstalk looks fairly good i should point out that the gain of the a08 pro has been adjusted for zero db here we have the frequency response from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz of the a08 pro's auxiliary output so this is be the preamp output and it looks pretty good it's maybe plus or minus three tenths of a db worst case and the channel balance is within a tenth of a dB. Now I did have to adjust the bass and treble controls to smooth out the frequency response, but it is looking pretty good. This plot shows the effect of the bass and treble controls on the frequency response for the A08 Pro, and this is measured at the auxiliary output, the preamp output, and I just showed the left channel only. And you can kind of see that for the bass, we have quite a big boost. It's about 14 dB or a decrease of 14 dB. The trouble is maybe a 7 dB boost or cut. The specification says it should be plus or minus 6 dB for either the bass or trouble, but I'm not complaining at all about having extra bass there, but that kind of just shows you the frequency area that it affects and by how much. And the blue line in the setter is with the tone controls set to give the flattest response. Before I talk about my listening experience with the Ayama A08 Pro, I wanted to mention a few things, and one of them was the actual price. So as of mid-June 2023, this guy is selling for about 130 bucks on Amazon, 
with the 36 volt 6 amp power supply. Also, I did check the Bluetooth feature. I connected the antenna up and then I was very easily able to connect to my Galaxy smartphone and the music that I played sounded just fine. At some point maybe I'll have a little bit more rigorous Bluetooth test, but that's not really what I do with my channel so much. But anyway, the Bluetooth seemed to work fine and it has aptX capability. Also, this is a Class D amplifier using the TPA3255 chipset. So it runs pretty cool. In fact, throughout all my testing, it never got more than about 104 degrees here. And that was either on the bench or playing music loud. There is a, a vent right here. It's not very big, but it is a little vent. And it does have a, a lot of metal around it. It feels very solid. This is a, a, has a nice solid feel to it. As far as listening, I decided to connect my Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers to this little guy. And I've listened to a lot of systems on the Watt 3 Puppy 2s. They are a very revealing speaker for the most part. And this guy sounded just fine with that speaker. It, it's just impressive, to be totally honest. I did like to crank up the bass control a bit, and I just thought it sounded good. I was hitting sound pressure levels of um, 88 to 92 dB SPLs, and it, it just sounded good. There was no strain. According to my realistic APM-100 power meter that I had connected, it was showing peaks of between 10 to 20 watts during that time when I was hitting the high sound pressure levels. And it never seemed stressed or, or anything. It sounded really good and it, it just surprised me. Now, if there is a spec for detail, which I kind of wish that there was a way to quantify the audio file term detail as a specification, but it's possible that maybe this was not as detailed as other amplifiers. That seems to be a comment with class D amplifiers. So at some point I will do a AB test between this amplifier and the Bryson 2B-LP amplifier that I have and see if I hear any difference when I get them set up. So we shall see. The Bryson 2B-LP is going to be AB'd against a pair of Macintosh MC30 tube amplifiers this weekend. Well, that will be a video, and so we'll put the Bryson after, after that AB test, I will do uh, the Bryson versus this guy. I don't know that I would make a video, but this other one, I will do a video because they're both pieces of vintage gear. That being said, this guy did really good. As I mentioned, the VU meter is kind of worthless other than it tells you that it's working or there's sound coming out, which you would hear, but I would lose the VU meter and I would have like two rows of LEDs that were loosely calibrated for power into either four or eight ohm loads. And I think that would be a lot more useful. Also, a tone bypass control would be nice or a center detent where you knew you were bypassed because right now you have to tweak these a little off center as you saw in the, the data uh, when I showed the little picture of where these guys are at to give me a flat response which is actually pretty good when you get it set up right but you're not going to be able to do that without an analyzer. So one other thing I do with amplifiers is remove the input signal and see what kind of noise I have coming out of the amplifiers at the speakers and I heard almost nothing. There was very, very little hiss coming out of this guy. In fact, I really had to strain to hear it. As far as any strange sounds when you turn it on and off, there were none. There was about a second and a half muting from when you turn it on to when you hear the sound. I don't think I ever drove this into clipping to where it shut down. In particular, one of my test tracks is uh, Temptation by Diana Crawl. And that sounded absolutely fantastic with this little lamp and, and the Wilson. So I would recommend this little lamp. Now, I don't get any kickback. I get to keep the amp for all the, the work I did testing it and making this video. Do check the description below because Ayama is supposed to send me a link 
and that may lead to a discount if you wanted to purchase this. I get I have no seller um, account, so I don't get credit for that. It's just you know I get to keep the amp for for doing this, regardless of what I think about it. And I do think highly of it so far. Now I don't really plan on making a habit of testing modern things. If you look at my introduction, it does say etc. So I will put this in the etc. But from what you have seen from almost all of my videos, it's all vintage gear. So um, that's going to be the focus of this channel. But I thought this was just a little diversion. I had almost finished putting together the video for the Ayama A08 Pro. And I just happened to be having a little get together for some audiophile friends where we were doing an AV test between a pair of tube mono block amplifiers and a solid state amplifier. And that will be the subject of a future video. Before people arrived, I had hooked up the Ayama A08 Pro to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers and hooked up a music source to it. And I didn't have it on at the time, but when we were all done with the A-B testing for the handful of people that were still around, I turned on the Ayama A08 Pro. They still didn't know what was playing, and I had them listen to the combination of the Ayama A08 Pro and the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers. And when everybody was done, I showed them that little lamp and they were just floored. They couldn't believe how good that thing sounded. Once you cranked it up to a certain level, it distorted, but it was pretty loud at that point. But overall, just at a nice, uh, good, loud level, it sounded really good and everybody was flabbergasted. So at some point, uh, a couple of them are going to come over and we're going to do an A-B test between the Yama A8 Pro and a couple solid state amps maybe. It probably won't be the subject of a video, it's just for our little audio group. But I just wanted to add that to this video that I'm making now. Once again, I thank you for taking time out of your day or night to check out this video. I would love to hear any comments you have. If you haven't subscribed, that would be a great thing for you to do to help the channel grow. And if you like the video, hit the like button as well. And until next time, have a great day or night.